In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to do an emergency reload with the KS7. Pretty sure everybody understands how to just load it in general, but I haven't seen any good videos about how to actually load this thing. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to talk about is the mechanism for loading this thing or the method of loading. Then we'll get into the different little techniques and when you would use it and so on and so forth. Kind of dry material, I apologize, but it doesn't seem like a lot of people understand this. So I just felt like I would contribute my information and my experience with this. So first things first, you're firing, you're firing, you're firing, and, you know, doing your bang to bang bang thing. And then you're out. You might, you probably will notice you're out by a click. And then you pull back. Typically, a, a, a normal response, when, if you train on a conventional shotgun, on a pump action shotgun, to rack it back to expose the ejection port for inserting a new round. You're going to follow that procedure with this one. Now, this is the only area that rounds come in and out. When they're fresh, they go in here to the magazine. And they come out of the chamber, which is deeper in here. And this action arm right here that I just moved, it is, you know, it's manipulated by the rearward or forward motion of the bolt. There's nothing complicated about this system. Nothing. So when the bolt moves to a certain area, it starts moving these little, what I'm calling action arms or whatever, uh, downwards and then when it starts moving forwards it pushes them up to guide a new shell from the magazine tube so the new shell comes from the magazine tube and shoots right here and then you pull it forward and the action arms pull it guide it into the chamber and it gets chambered and they get tucked up above the bolt nice and out of the way so anyways that's how it works very simple very intuitive now loading it it can confuse a lot of people because you feel like you're going really deep into the chamber or really deep into the system you're not you're actually not reaching very far it's actually uh, pretty intuitive so so we're racked back and i rack back vigorously because i want this as rearward as possible you're not going to break you're not going to hurt it it's not you know cheap stuff that's made very well and if you own one, you'll know what I'm talking about. So it's down all the way and there ain't nothing in there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the front of my shell or snap cap, practice with snap cap, please. Let's be smart here. So you see the front of these arms? I want the front of my snap cap or shell pushing up. So I want it to push up on those bars all the way and while you're doing that keep your thumb behind it because you're it's going to be like feeding into the magazine once it goes up all the way you're going to push in into the chamber and notice that the round is caught by the action bars now so there you go it's not going to come back out you won't have to worry about that i've tried many different ways to actually get uh, get the shell to fall back out and find some weakness I'm still having problems with that because it's still to this day I'm kind of stubborn about it because with a conventional shotgun with an open ejection port you twist it the wrong way or you jar it you can kick that out or you can cause a malfunction while it's trying to feed that has happened to me with my H70s so again you're just going to push these arms up all the way and then feed it and that's it and now it's caught by the action arms in gravity because now these action arms just want to move freely back and forth because it's at that point where it's able to freely move and there you go it's good to go now let's go ahead and talk about the individual techniques and when you'd use them so first one is shoulder right so with a shouldered emergency reload you're probably actually using the shotgun and then you figure oh crap i'm out and you run through that drill and you want to be right back on target just like that as quick as that it's really simple and i wasn't even going fast i was just going normal pace but okay i'm out get a new shell get it in there and you're good to go so you obviously you can do that 
standing, kneeling, or prone, right? Pretty much when you're static. Doesn't matter. Now, a variation of this would obviously be, okay, you're shooting, you're shooting, you're shooting, and then you're out, and you can cant it towards you to kind of make it a little more intuitive for your thumb or your hand in general. It's up to you. But I can tell you this much. The slower you go on trying to insert it, for whatever reason, the more likely you are to hang up your fingers or something like that. It's kind of weird. But the faster I go, the more smooth it actually is to get it in there right and with the least amount of hiccups possible. I don't know why that is, but the slower I go, the more I linger my fingers, the more the, the little action arms seem to want to come back and trap my thumb in here and then trap my fingernails or something like that. Something off, but yeah, with this gas mask on, I don't have any peripheral vision, so I can't see if I'm loading it properly, and you shouldn't have to see either. It's very intuitive. It's right here. I know one of the comments made was that it feels like you're reloading into your armpit. What is it when you're reloading your AR right here? You're kind of reloading in your armpit, aren't you? Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. All right. So anyways... The next thing is what I just kind of demonstrated there was we're going to do it in the workspace. Now, we're not talking about doing it like this. We're not talking about doing it like this. We're talking about doing it like this, like Navy SEAL style, like locked up and chicken winged. So you can see my elbow is securing it against my body. This is a mobility hold. You're holding it securely while you are running. For whatever reason that may be. So anyways, bounding, peeling, whatever. So you may be shooting, 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 and then you're out and it's your time to peel because you decided, eh, I'll just do the last two rounds and then I'll peel out and load on the run. Okay. And so you get secure, you get your round out and, or a shell, and then you load it in and you're good to go. You can continue your GTA run. But that's pretty much it. That's doing a speed reload on the kel KS7. Very intuitive. It's very simple. You don't have to overthink it. Work with the gun. It'll work well for you. So, with that said, I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and leave a comment below, and you guys have a good one.